Now, riding shotgun with us for the rest of the hour, and we'll take your phone calls, uh, is Mike Cernovich of Cernovich Media. Uh, he's been really upset about Trump and the omnibus bill, which I am as well, but I'm even more mad at Congress. He's been really, really upset about the fact that why don't the Republicans that have raised even more money thanks to Trump than the Democrats, why aren't they having buses? Why aren't they having demonstrations? But also the Omar Mateen things come out. You got Seth Rich, investigator shot twice in the back. Regardless of what you think about Seth Rich, that's crazy. Uh, you've got all this stuff happening. And I want to get his take just politically where we are right now in the Republic. And why would the anti-gunners come out and say, you give us an inch, we take it a mile, we do want to ban guns, we're going to kill people that don't turn their guns in. I mean, the Democrats have gone into a new phase of calling for violence and, and, and really frothing and building up towards something big. Is Soros crazy enough to actually try a physical overthrow like he's done successfully in other countries? Mike Cernan, it's good to have you on. What do you want to tackle first? Yeah, I mean, I want to talk about why the media refused to cover an FBI informant who was plotting, convicted of plotting to murder Pamela Geller. There was a big, I, I mean, I don't know, Alex, I, I'm just, I'm really charged up today. I'm going to try not to yell on air, but Pamela Geller, people tried to murder her, and yet the media attacked her because she's friends with John Bolton, but they didn't cover the trial of the man in Cleveland who was an FBI informant who was then charged with being part of the Garland, Texas murder plot. And didn't Dan folks Geller. even say where Geller's daughters lived who were apolitical and say, go kill them? I mean, this is an example of leftist bullying against you, I, our families. Like you said, they're trying to gear people up to kill us. And, and her daughters, Pamela Geller is Jewish, and her four young daughters are Jewish women who now are marked for death by the radical people who want to attack Geller. And then the media goes, you and I are anti-Semitic, and I go, wait a minute, I'm trying to protect four young Jewish women against jihadi terrorists that the media has sent on them. So the whole thing is, is so frustrating, Alex. And then this Omar Mateen thing breaks. You and I, I remember I was in New York at the time, and I remember I got a tip, and then you, I talked to you and you said you got the same tip. They said that Omar Mateen was an FBI asset or connected to an FBI asset. And then people go, oh, you're a liar, fake news, da-da-da-da-da. Well, it turns out, and I want to talk about this, and I really want to lay it out for the people who listen, because this story is about why they hate us. You and I, even though we don't join these groups, we believe that in court, black, brown, Jewish, Muslim, Christian, Catholic, agnostic, no one should ever be convicted of a crime they did not commit. However, it was revealed that 12 days into the trial of Omar Martin's wife, that Omar Mateen's father, who you can find a picture of him with the VIP seat at Hillary Clinton's rally, you can find that. Omar Mateen's father was an FBI asset. Not only was he an FBI asset, but when people reported Omar Mateen to the FBI and said, hey, this Omar Mateen guy says he has connections to Al Qaeda and ISIS, FBI go, well, we're not going to do anything about it because we like his dad so much. So if gay lives matter, why did the FBI, which had the power to stop this terrorist attack against gay people, why did they not act? If brown lives matter, why is the Department of Justice, in my opinion, framing an innocent brown woman, innocent Muslim woman, Omar Mateen's wife, went, well, to cover up? That's the world we in, Alex, where you and I, we're actually trying to save every life, every, every person's life, and we're standing up against this tyrannical, unethical prosecutor, but we're the bad guys. So it's now proven the FBI could have, under Mueller and Comey, let's not forget either, Comey and Mueller, this was under their watch. They now knew about Nicholas Cruz. They knew about Omar Mateen. And in my view, they also knew about the Vegas shooting. And that's why the Vegas shooting is not getting any traction. That's right. Again, Mike Cernovich is joining us. You've got another cowardly blue state area, Coward County, standing down. 30 plus times, it was 20, now it's 30 plus times that there were warnings, things could have been done, he should have been adjudicated to have his guns taken, should have been able to buy them, he was on psychotropic drugs, he was under government care, another government stand down, the deputies stand down, and then they turn it all around and blame gun owners for what happened with 16 dead, and then Soros funds this giant march with thousands of buses, uh, you know, we have video on hundreds of buses just on one street. This is so synthetic. This is so fake. This is so insane how they turn it around and blame us. 
yeah, they want to disarm gun owners, but they don't want to hold the FBI accountable. And isn't that a good shift, Alex? Isn't it interesting how you and I, a couple of white guys who are called all kinds of names by these groups, why is the SPLC not standing up for Omar Mateen's wife and saying, whoa, 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 wait a minute. It's actually the deep state that is trying to frame an innocent woman in order to cover up their complicity in the Pulse nightclub massacre, which killed gay people, right? There's nobody from the SPLC, the ADL, the ACLU. You and I and your listeners and my listeners and readers, we're the only people left in America who actually cares about the civil rights and civil liberties of all Americans. We really have gotten to that point where my lawyers look at these lawsuits against us. They're totally fake. They're not even lawsuits. There's just screeds of lies in there. And they said they've never heard of major universities like Georgetown having their free speech division. These are endowed setup groups with taxpayer money to defend the First Amendment, trying to destroy it. But I think, Mike, that's because they're so desperate. Well, and they are, they're complicit. Again, let's just look at the facts. No conspiracy theories. Let's just look at the facts. The facts are the FBI had advanced warning that Omar Mateen was a domestic terrorist. That's a fact. The FBI chose to do nothing. They chose to not prosecute him, even though he lied to them and thus could have been prosecuted like General Flynn was for obstructing justice. The FBI had advanced warning of Nicholas Cruz. The FBI informant involved um, with the plot against Pamela Geller recently convicted. So the facts are thus. The FBI and the deep state could have stopped these attacks. They haven't. Just None like San Bernardino. Let's ask why on the other side.